Look at this absolutely ridiculous vlogging setup. This thing is about as tall as I am. Dedicated monitor, dedicated mic, body with cables going everywhere. Don't forget the Fat Shark battery that powers the monitor. Your true Kentuckian camo strap to hold the camera. And a bright red dock off Amazon tripod to finish it off. What an absolute work of art that is. What's up guys? Welcome back to another video. This new vlog setup is absolutely ridiculous. I wish you guys could see what I look like right now. I look like an absolute idiot, but I can finally see myself on my new monitor. And I'm wearing sunglasses so I can look at it and you guys have no idea, even though I just told you I'm looking at the monitor. But regardless, it looks awesome. It is incredibly heavy. My arm is about to give out, but you gotta do it for the Oh God. I almost need two hands to do this. That's what she said. <laughs> I had to start doing my vlog ups again every day to uh, get ready for this beefy setup. <laughs> but yeah, in today's video, I am going to go over a little tip, a little trick that I use, a little piece of gear that I have. It's super cheap, super tiny that I use on all of my GoPros that basically makes your footage melt and look like butter. But before we get into that, as you guys see behind me, that is the wrong side. This is the right side behind me that way. Let's see if I can, the screen's not reversed. It's just, uh, it's, I don't know how to work this. Uh, 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 if I just uh, and rotate the other way. There we go. That, God, it went out of focus. I'm just gonna turn the camera around. That is a brand new coffee machine. So without further ado, cue the epic intro B-roll. <sighs> yeah, definitely not the energy to do a copy sequence. Plus, we're just gonna dive right into how to get that buttery look in your footage that looks just like this. And to help get that buttery looking footage, we're gonna need the help of these guys. So if you guys who don't know, these little dark rectangular looking pieces of glass are ND filters, neutral density filters. Basically all they are are just sunglasses for your camera. That raises the question, why do our cameras need sunglasses? They can see just fine without them. Like our eyes not too bright. Like why would you, I don't, why? Why do we need sunglasses for them? And that's because the way that the camera works and more explicitly on the GoPro, which is all we really care about because that's what we're filming our videos with. As the light comes into the camera, the sensor inside the GoPro turns on and then turns off really, really fast. Up to a hundredth of a second, a thousandth of a second, one, two thousandths of a second is all it takes for that sensor to turn on and turn off. And the length of that sensor is turned on determines how much light is let in, which basically just means how bright is the image it's recording gonna be. When it comes to normal camera filming, there is a specific length that you want that shutter open depending on the frame rate you're recording in. So for most of our FPV videos, we're recording at about 30 frames a second, 60 frames a second, and in some special cases, such as the super slow-mo stick cam, you record at 120 frames a second. And the golden rule of video, which is called the 180 degree shutter rule, means that the duration that your shutter should be open should be half of what the frame rate is. So if you're shooting at 30 frames a second, ideally to get the proper amount of motion blur, to get that buttery kind of look to make things look realistic, you're gonna need to have the shutter open for 1 60th of a second. It takes 30 frames a second, and basically half of that time in between each frame needs to be the shutter open and recording, and then shut for the other half. What that ends up alluding to is motion blur. The longer that shutter is open, the more motion blur you get. Think of it like taking your iPhone photos in the dark. You know, if you're kind of shaky a little bit and it's dark out, you take the photo, you're like, ah, oh, dang, it's blurry. You know, it's not like it's out of focus. It's just blurry because to get more light in, to make a brighter image, since you don't have much light in the first place, the shutter has to stay open longer, which makes it more susceptible to motion blur. 
That's why when you do like really high speed photos, you know, those photos where like you can like freeze water droplets in the frame, those have tons and tons of light because the shutter speed is just so high. That shutter is open for just like just so few microseconds that you need a ton of light to get in in just those few milliseconds that that shutter is open. So coming back to our GoPros and what the hell does this mean for our FPV footage is to make the footage look realistic, we need to have our shutter speed be low enough to give us motion blur. And when you film outside in the daytime, especially when it comes to bright, sunny day filming, which is what most of us fly in, because that's the best time to fly, the GoPro can have its shutter speed as high as one two thousandth and one four thousandth of a second. So basically we have to reduce the amount of light coming in to the GoPro. So the GoPro will be able to lower that shutter speed to allow that shutter to stay open for a little bit longer just so we can get that nice creamy looking motion blur. So when we're flying through trees and flying over grass, you know, got that really realistic look to it rather than just looking like completely still pictures just arranged really quickly together, we can give that effect of motion, make it really feel like you're actually flying around because you have that realistic looking motion blur. Usually we film at 30 frames a second or 60 frames a second. So to get proper motion blur for that, that means your shutter speed needs to be 1 60th of a second or 1 1 20th of a second. Now, personally, I've tried 1 60th of a second shooting at 30 frames a second. And for freestyle footage, it's really not that good. It's, it's too blurry. There's just so much motion blur, especially if you're like doing flips and stuff and you're moving around erratically, you really can't tell what's going on. But if you are really smooth on the sticks, you're really careful with your flying, 1 60th of a second, that 30 frames a second, with that 180 degree shutter just looks so beautiful. It just looks so creamy. It looks really natural. You know, it really looks like a f cinema camera on a helicopter flying through. But the second you go to a roll or a flip or a juicy flick, everything just gets so blurry you can't tell what's going on. For our purposes, I usually get the shutter to around 1 1 20th of a second and I record in 60 frames a second and then play it back at 30 frames a second. And that, that is the best combo that I have personally found that I usually shoot with when I go out and fly. Back to the topic of these little nuggets. We're gonna figure out how to really properly use them. So there's a bunch of different ND filters on the market, but the most common ones, especially for the GoPro, are these TBS Jello Guards. They're basically just these little rectangular plates of glass that are increasing or decreasing darkness levels. So uh, here's one of them. As you can see, you know, it's really not that dark. It almost does nothing, you know. Let's step up to, I believe, what is an ND4. Uh, yeah, that's a little bit darker looking. And then we'll go the darkest one, which is, I believe is an ND8. Yeah, there you go. Got looks like sunglass material just hovering around there. But yeah, these are we use to de decrease that light so we can knock that shutter speed down. There's also alternative ways to have ND filters. I know Ethics has a stick on ND filter. Personally, for the stick on ND filters, I use these little guys. Uh, I think you can get them from Race Day Quads and from Get FPV. Uh, I got mine off of eBay from a guy named Davis down in Florida. He's the guy who manufactures those. They're awesome. I love the stick on ones because they're not glass. They don't break. They're just plastic and you stick them on. They basically never come off because honestly, if you fly during the day, you never really need to take them off. But for those of you who have one GoPro or you don't want to leave a stick on ND filter on permanently, you buy a ton of them. So you stick them on and pull them off as much as possible. Or if you want just the best video quality because the plastic kind of unsharpens things a little bit. It's really easy to smudge. The glass TBS Jello guards are the best way to go. And to mount those on your GoPro, personally, I have these little pink bumpers for your Hero 7. And these guys just slip right on the front and you can pull the ND filter out and you can change the ND level in it. I have ND 2s, 4s, 8s, all those. So you can make sure your exposure is right. So let me just pull a GoPro out and show you guys how this slips on. And bear in mind, these little bumpers that fit the Jello Guard will fit the Hero 5, Hero 6, and Hero 7. So if you have one of these GoPro-y looking GoPros, they're going to work fine. But if you have a session, you're probably going to need a special case that's going to accept the TBS Jello Guards. Just got to line it up. It just slips right on, just like that. And personally, since I have two GoPros, what I do is I leave the ND8 stick-on filter on this GoPro at all times, and I leave 
this GoPro with no stick on ND filter. So I can just use the Jello guards and go from no ND to ND2 to ND4 to ND8 and places where it's not so bright. And then I leave the stick on ND filter on this GoPro, which is an ND8. I can put the ND2 over top of this and make it an ND16, or I can put the ND4 over top of this and make it an ND32, which is pretty much what I use if it's bright and sunny outside. ND16 to ND32 uh, for these really bright summer Australian days seems to give me pretty much the perfect exposure for getting that really creamy low shutter speed look. So now that we've got these guys on, or we figured out how to mount them, how do you use them? What's the trick? What's the key to getting these right? You can't just slap on an ND filter and just expect it to work. If it's an incredibly bright day, you put an ND4 on and you come back and you look at your footage, you're like, wow, that just looks like nothing has happened because nothing has happened because you didn't use enough ND. If it's super bright, you gotta use more, but how do you know how much more to use? That's the question. Well, your first step for figuring out the right ND is take your GoPro when you're out and turn it on. And once the screen comes up, you're gonna go ahead and go to the settings. And then you're gonna scroll down to where it says shutter. You're gonna click it and it's gonna be on auto. What you're gonna wanna do is personally, I set mine to 1 1 20th, right about there. This is about the best setting I found for freestyle. Now, if you're just doing smooth cinematic flying, you're not going crazy set it to 1 60th. Setting it to 1 60th creates a lot more motion blur. It looks really smooth and creamy, but if you're doing flips and rolls and other freestyle stuff, it's not gonna look that good. So personally, for most flying, 1 1 20th is perfect. Let's go ahead and set that, just like that. So you've set the shutter speed. Let's go down to ISO min and ISO max. What you're gonna wanna do is you're gonna set these both to 100 because you want the lowest ISO possible. So there's two settings the GoPro changes when it tries to adjust how bright the image is. There's the shutter speed, which it can't change because you've locked it. And then there's ISO, which is the only other thing left. So when you have this locked, all the GoPro can change is the ISO. But when you raise the ISO, you add more noise into the image and it looks really awful. I mean, it just looks terrible. The GoPro does not do a good job anything over ISO 100 or ISO 200. So you want this as low as possible, preferably all the way down to 100. So set your ISO min to 100, set your shutter to 1 1 20th, and let's go back and take a look at what our image looks like. So for the sake of this video, I'm gonna raise my ISO min which is the minimum ISO value to the highest possible to simulate being in a ridiculously brightly sunny outside environment. And let's look at that. Oh my God, it is incredibly bright. So now that we have our shutter speed locked and our ISO locked, keep in mind, if you're doing this outside, you would lock your ISO to 100. Now, set that down. Keep in mind, I'm also using the ND8 stick-on filter, so everything's gonna be a lot darker than it usually would, especially compared to your normal GoPros that don't have an ND filter permanently on them. So everything's super bright. So let's go ahead, let's bring in our first ND filter. So I'm gonna start with the lowest one that I had, which is an ND2, which basically just doubles whatever's on here. So if you have nothing on here, you have an ND2. But since I have an ND8 on here, it's gonna be an ND16. And also I feel like I should talk about this now, the higher the number, the stronger it is. Let's go ahead and put this guy on. And let's look at our image. No media. Yeah, that's still a little bit bright. I don't think that ND2 was enough for this. So let's go ahead, let's pull this guy off. And let's take another guy. Also again, I would highly recommend having multiple of these little bumpers with a couple different uh, ND filters in them so you can quickly change in the field between ND2, 4, 8, 16, whatever you want. The bumpers are super cheap. I got them printed for like six bucks each or something like that locally here in Australia. Let's go ahead and pop this guy on. There we go. Look at that. That was the golden value. So yeah, that looks really good. If you were doing this out in the field, you just kind of look around, look at the really bright areas, point the GoPro in the really dark areas and see how it looks in all those areas and make sure that, that the screen's not too bright or it's not too dark from wherever you think you're gonna be flying at. And once you've got the right ND filter on, we can go ahead and head on to step number two. 
Now that you have the right ND filter on, you have two options. If the area that you're flying in is pretty much evenly lit everywhere, there's no really dark places and no incredibly bright places. And the GoPro just looks really good when you kind of point in any direction with your shutter speed locked and with your ISO locked. You could just not touch anything and leave the exposure locked which is okay if the place is evenly lit, there's no really dark places or really bright places you're gonna be flying in. But basically what that means is the GoPro can't actually change basically the brightness of the image when you're flying around. So when you point at the sky, usually the GoPro kind of darkens down a bit so you can see the sky better, it's not totally white. Or when you go in really shaded areas like under a tree canopy, the GoPro will usually brighten the image up a bit to try and see a little bit more so you're not just flying in the dark it looks like. But if everything is well lit and you wanna leave that shutter speed locked in place, I like to go give the GoPro a little wiggle room in case we fly into areas that are super dark and I go ahead and I set the ISO min to 100 and I change the ISO max to around 400. That gives the GoPro a little bit of wiggle room. If you go somewhere that's really dark, you can kind of change the exposure and a little bit more ISO just to make the image a little bit more brighter in those really dark, like under the tree canopy areas. But in general, the GoPro should stay about the same exposure everywhere because I've got it set with the ND filter. If you'd rather go a more easy route, especially if it's sunset and the lighting is changing between every pack, if you're flying in places with tons and tons of shade and also tons and tons of areas of just incredibly bright sunlight, what I would do is I would go ahead and put your shutter back to auto and then put the ISO min at 100 and ISO max at 400. So basically now you allow the GoPro to adjust the shutter speed. So if you do go to areas that are really bright that you didn't really expose properly for, the GoPro will raise your shutter speed. You'll lose a little bit of that motion blur, but it's better than having just a totally overexposed shot. And then also go ahead and take that ISO min, set that to 100, and set your ISO max to 400 or 800. Personally, I leave the ISO max at 400. If you ever go above ISO 400 on the GoPros, it just really doesn't look good. You can see a lot of weird grainy stuff going on and uh, it kind of ruins the footage. So yeah, that is it basically. Set your shutter speed to 1 1 20th, set your ISO min and max to 100. Keep trying different ND filters out until everything in the back of the GoPro kind of looks all right. Nothing is pure white and overexposed. Nothing is pure black and totally underexposed. Everything is nicely exposed. The image looks great right out of the GoPro. Either just raise your ISO max to 400 and leave the ISO min at 100 or go ahead and put your ISO max back to 400 and put the shutter speed back to auto if you just wanna be safe. Now with all that said, let's go ahead and take a look at what that really creamy buttery footage looks like right out of the GoPro. So yeah, that's it. I hope you guys liked the video. Make sure to leave a comment down below if you found this video helpful. Make sure to smash that like button, subscribe if you haven't, turn that bell on for post notification, and I will see you guys in the next video. Peace!